Thank you, and thank you to the speaker, and thank you, Rep Representative Escobar, for not only yielding your time, but to also for welcoming me and many others to your community just a few days ago. Last week, I had the opportunity to visit our southern border by way of El Paso, and this was my second time to the border. And very similar to the op-ed that I published in Newsweek earlier today, I'd like to share a little bit of my reaction to this very important and eye-opening congressional delegation that I was able to participate in. If you're a Pennsylvanian, like I am, you know that we just observed Groundhog Day. And Paxitani Phil didn't see his shadow. So we can all expect an early spring. At our country's southwest border, it feels like Every day is Groundhog Day. Like so many Americans, I'm a combination of angry and frustrated and heartbroken by what continues to happen there day after day and year after year and decade after decade. We know that our immigration policies have to align with the shared values of our country. We are a country that is built primarily by immigrants. And we must welcome new arrivals compassionately while also protecting and securing our safety and our economy. My community is indeed thousands of miles away from the southern border in the suburbs of Philadelphia. And we face unique challenges every day regarding immigration. But what is not unique about my community, indeed about every community, is that we have felt the impact in some way of our fractured and broken immigration system. My visit to the southern border last week was not my first. Previously, I had the opportunity to go to Brownsville, Texas. And these trips have taught me that our system is broken, but indeed can be repaired. I've seen the efforts firsthand of important changes that Congress here has made and implemented since my first visit. Gone are the dehumanizing cages and the literal smell of humanity. In their place is a clean and dignified environment centered on the health and the well-being of the migrants and of the incredibly dedicated Americans who work on behalf of our country. There is still, still clearly an enormous amount of work that needs to be done to secure our border with enhanced processes, more staffing, better systems, but the difference is palpable. Most significantly, though, what has not been improved is the volume of migrants and the fact that there is still no other path than this desperate one for people who seek a better life in this vibrant and healthy economy. We don't need more of the same expensive Band-Aids, but rather we need real reform with more legal pathways to come here and to participate in our nation's next 250 years. I am committed to bipartisanship and to securing our border, and I am asking the very same of Congress. Specifically, I'm asking the very same of our speaker, the message that I want to share today is this. Our Republican leadership in Congress needs to commit to bringing bipartisan immigration reform bills like Veronica Escobar's Bipartisan Dignity Act to the floor for a vote and now. As an example, here's what the Dignity Act would do. Number one, it would provide more money for CBP and border infrastructure to prevent illegal immigration. Number two, it would require employers to verify the immigration status of workers and to ensure that they are here lawfully. Number three, it would provide a pathway to citizenship for dreamers who are the children of immigrants who came here when they were very young. And number four, it would establish a path to permanent residency status for eligible individuals without lawful immigration status who meet various requirements, including paying into a fund to provide training for U.S. workers. Let us pause and think about what I've just shared. Policies, the vast, vast majority of Americans agree on. If we, as a Congress, are not passing legislation that the vast, vast majority of Americans agree on, I truly believe, as my colleague Representative Alyssa Slotkin mentioned, we are a derelict of our duty. Efforts like the Senate bipartisan bill that was just introduced yesterday must also be considered and must also be voted on. And while I'm still reading through the details of the 370-page bill, I'm encouraged by the very summary that I've seen. While the path forward on immigration reform will likely not be straightforward, this much is true. We must reach a compromise with real solutions to this complex conversation and issue right now. 
So again, I'm calling on our speaker, Speaker Johnson, to change his deeply cynical position that, quote, now is not the time for immigration reform. I couldn't dis disagree more. Most people in most communities across America couldn't disagree more. No solution will be perfect, but we cannot let that keep us from making progress for both the American people and for those who seek refuge here. Not too long ago, it was indeed my own family seeking shelter. My father and my grandmother survived the Holocaust. They left war-torn Poland after World War II, and they sought a better way of life here in the United States. I saw my young dad and my grandmother in the eyes of frightened and desperate and hopeful migrants that I was able to meet last week. One small family unit in particular struck me. He was a young man of probably no more than 20 years old with his beautiful curly-headed toddler who reminded me of my youngest child. He told me about traffickers taking pictures of his son to intimidate and extort the father into conformance with their threats and their demands. We can do better. A lot has changed since my own father and my grandmother took a ship across the Atlantic Ocean to New York City, and our immigration law laws must also change as well. So I honor the souls, both migrant and American, whose lives collide each other, with each other every day at our borders. And I again urge Republican leadership to bring a bipartisan border bill to the House floor. We must seek the hope of fresh opportunities, the shadows that burden us must all be lifted. That is possible, but only if we here in Congress understand that this nation depends on us to act and to act now. With that, I encourage all of my colleagues to support the bipartisan immigration reform, and I yield back to Representative Escobar. Thank you.